What's up guys? I'm here to tell you a little bit of a death penalty story while out on a nice Friday drive. This story is going on right now. It is the story of Richard Glossop. All right. Richard Glossop was sentenced to death for a murder he didn't commit. Now, to be fair, he wasn't sentenced to death for actually committing the murder. He was sentenced to death for ordering someone else do the dirty work for him. And for what it's worth, that guy was actually found guilty of committing the murder. The problem here comes into a conflict of priorities over the death penalty. Now I know, I know what you're thinking because I think the same thing from time to time, especially when my blood is up and my ire is going. The death penalty is a based and dead pill, right? A life for a life, a death for a death. Justice brought about through the ultimate retribution of ending the scumbag who caused so much harm to someone else unlawfully. Right? That makes sense to us. It, it tickles us right in our common sense boners. We know exactly why this person is dying. It's because they deserve it for what they did to someone else. And that friends, that cosmic justice is just what our brains crave and desire. And I'm with you on it. In concept, this is a great idea. When you have the guilty, and it's undeniably so, those guilty should be made uh, to be brought to a quick end. But there are several out there, including a very good friend of mine, Stephen Gosney, who are vehemently opposed to the death penalty. I'll let you in on a little secret. Despite my personal admiration of that sense of bold justice and swift retribution, I have come to become against the death penalty two years ago. And Rich and, and this Glossop guy, Richard Glossop, did Glossop, his parents named him as a death penalty. My, my man. Uh, he, he is the case. He is the case where it seems like you have everything right. You have uh, testimony that this guy ordered the killing of, uh, of the victim. Now, the problem with that testimony is, uh, is multifold. Uh, one, it comes from the guy who did the killing, which, I mean, seems like the right source to get it from. He told me to do it. I did it at his request. Okay, makes some sense. But what if I told you that the guy made that allegation against Glossop, knowing that that allegation would keep him from getting the death penalty, would allow him to serve a lesser sentence, even though he's the guy whose hands literally got bloody doing the deed, whereas Glossop's were always clean. Now, Glossop has always maintained his innocence. He has never admitted to the killings or accepted his guilty uh, guilty conviction. And he has been um, appealing his conviction ever since. In fact, he was actually slated to be executed in 2015, narrowly avoided that because of questions about the drugs used for lethal injection. Now, personally, I wouldn't want to go by lethal injection. That shit looks miserable to me. Like, oh yeah, you just get a needle and fade away. Nope poison courses through your body, you're just paralyzed, and you can't express the writhing agony that your bloodstream is undergoing at the time. But that's a different idea. Do I think that that means you can't have lethal injection? No, I just wouldn't want it. But put a bullet in me, please. Decapitate me, something like that. Quick, sever the nerve stems or whatever. Get me gone as fast as possible. Laying there on a table, burning from the inside. Doesn't seem great. But that's a separate, that's a whole separate question. Back in 2015, the validity of these drugs, the availability of these drugs, and their uh, questionable acceptance under the Eighth Amendment, um, the modern interpretation of the Eighth Amendment's prohibition on cruel and unusual punishment saved his hide back then. And it turns out that's actually probably a good thing because recently it came out that uh, not only were there questions about this, uh, this guy and his statement about Glossop being the guy who ordered the killing, right? But it 
turns out that the Attorney General's office actually knew that statements made by the other guy, by the other witness, were materially false statements and refused to, do, or failed, you know, whichever way you want to look at it, failed to disclose that fact to Glossop's attorneys to the point where now the Attorney General's office has actually joined Glossop in his appeal saying he shouldn't be executed. They say not only should he not be executed, but that he should never have been convicted in the first place. His rights were violated. He did not have a fair trial. And a jury could not possibly come to the conclusion that he did what he is convicted of doing based on the evidence that the state actually had and was able to present. These materially false statements prejudiced him to the point of a death penalty conviction, y'all. And then what happens? They go to the Court of Appeals and they say, hey, uh, we don't think he should die. Attorney General doesn't think he should die. Here's the problems with it. The Court of Appeals just says, too fucking bad. You get to die anyway, homie. I mean, I'm sorry that uh, your conviction was unjust. And even the prosecutor's office who convicted you says, no, you uh, you should not be you should not be going to jail or dying at all. We're gonna just let it go through. We're gonna let it go through because fuck you. That's why. Get on the get on the table and die. Now, luckily, just earlier today, luckily for this guy. The Supreme Court has temporarily stayed his execution. That's right. After all of this, the Supreme Court is still needing to take up his case because this man is still convicted to die, even though the prosecution and the defense are aligned and saying, yeah, this guy should be free to go home. The Supreme Court has to determine whether or not he can. And they have, they've gone ahead and said, okay, you don't die today. We're going to take a look at the case. But can you imagine this system, the system that we have built, where a proclaimed innocent man, by both the defense and the state, that he has never wavered from at all, knowingly brought about by knowingly false testimony, is still on death row, awaiting death, and in some crazy theory, may actually still be executed without, you know, a, a pardon from the governor of the state. That is a crazy concept. And the only thing keeping him alive, because remember, this guy should have been executed years ago. The only thing keeping him alive was some fortune on a temporary stay of his execution eight years prior when he should have been dead. That system has problems, y'all. And for all of our marveling and our comfort at the convenient nature of a system that doles out obvious justice, death for death, we're faced with this major, major problem. And this is why, while I recognize the right of the state, the authority of the state, and the justice of the state to administer death for someone appropriately convicted, the state has this problem with competently, appropriately convicting people. And this problem is not unique. It is rather pervasive. Again, here we have a man convicted by bad actions or at best missed actions of the state in which they refused to provide evidence. They violated the rules of criminal procedure. They violated his constitutional right and sentenced him to die for it. The only thing keeping him alive is a series of fortunate events that have brought about the final ultimate revelation that all of this was built on a lie. So while I, uh, I get the idea of the death penalty and support it in concept, in practice, with a corrupt prosecutorial system and a failed court system. It's hard for me to countenance its actual use and implementation despite its underlying logic. But what do you guys think? Are you guys still for the death penalty? Are you against the death penalty? 
What do you think? Can the state do it? Drop a comment down below. Let me know how you feel about it. I'll probably do some more in-depth conversations about Glossop in this case uh, with some friends of mine on an upcoming show. If you want to check that out, check out the live streams. Until next time, guys, have a good night. Drive happy, be happy, and hope the state doesn't fucking kill you. Peace.